This question was asked in the ASD village. Carol Bird's very nice aspic group. I think it's a really good question. So I did again some research on that. Fibromyalgia and autism, is there a connection? The connection between fibromyalgia and autism is existent. It is not that fibromyalgia is triggering autism in an individual. For sure not. There are very different things. I even found this link here on the National Autistic Society page. Autism, Asperger's and Fibromyalgia. So Sarah F86 says, I am an assistant psychologist and in the practice where I work, we have begun to notice a pattern of people, more often women, who have an ISD diagnosis and either they or another family member in their direct line grandparent or child also have an ASD diagnosis and fibromyalgia I started doing some research about a possible link and while there is precious little published work, there seem to be many people experiencing both in their family line. Some research suggests that it may be that both are related to particular genetic differences. I have both conditions, somebody answer. So there is another has ASD and developed fibromyalgia. There is also now some research evidence that the physical problem can also cause anxiety. So mental health problems aren't just co-occurring. Indeed, a significant number of those with panic disorders are also hypermobile. In inflammation in patients with fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a condition in which there is extensive chronic pain across the body with an increased pain response to pressure, which would normally not be painful. Central to the pathogenesis of fibromyalgia is impaired nociceptive pain signal processing in the nervous system. Therefore, fibromyalgia in its pure form is a neurobiological disorder rather than a psychiatric or psychological disorder. Although the exact cause of fibromyalgia is unknown, what is known is that there is a lot of overlap between fibromyalgia and rheumatoid arthritis, chronic fatigue syndrome and systemic lupus erythematosus. These disorders are autoimmune disorders and display significant levels of systemic inflammation. Scientists have speculated whether fibromyalgia could also be inflammatory in nature, though evidence for this has been lacking to date. We don't have good treatment options for fibromyalgia, so identifying a potential treatment target could lead to the development of innovative, more effective therapies and finding objective neurochemical changes in the brains of patients with fibromyalgia should help reduce the persistent stigma 
that many patients face, often being told their symptoms are imaginary and there's nothing really wrong with them. That's so bad when you have so much pain and then you are told it doesn't exist. That's gaslighting of the worst kind. During neuroinflammation, microglia, brain's immune cells and astrocytes support cells become activated and release various inflammatory mediators such as chemokines and cytokines. These inflammatory responses are usually localized to the brain but over time they may compromise the blood-brain barrier and lead to systemic inflammation. The influx of systemic immune cells such as lymphocytes in the brain after BBV breakdown can further worsen neuroinflammation and may lead to permanent neural damage. Neuroinflammation in fibromyalgia. Several studies have now shown the presence of neuroinflammation in the brains of patients with fibromyalgia. The CSF, a direct measure of the brain, as well as blood plasma levels of various inflammatory markers were investigated between patients and healthy controls. All inflammatory markers were substantially higher in the CSF and plasma of patients with fibromyalgia compared to controls. This suggests that fibromyalgia has both neuroinflammation as well as systemic inflammation. When you eat a species appropriate diet which will reduce inflammation overall in your body then the chance that you resolve all your pain issues is very high and Bart K talks about that in his video if you have joint pain, chronic pain, feeling exhausted, depression, it can actually mean different things. Bart K did a very good video on his fibromyalgia experience and how going carnivore for him solve the issue. Many autistics have an issue with oxalates and then if you are on a diet that is high in oxalate those oxalates will build up in your body and embed in your tissue joints, in muscles, everywhere and this can give you a lot of pain. So when I went carnivore it took about three months. As I said in early videos to completely resolve my chronic pain issue. I had severe back pain so when I got up in the morning I had to immediately sit down again because the pain was so severe and then I had to wait until the pain was a little bit less and then I could go up to the restroom and whatever. 
And in addition to that, I had chronic hip pain, especially on the left side. There was some joint stiffness, so when I would bend over to bind my shoes, I had to elevate my left foot so I could actually bind my left shoe. And on the right side, it was on the inner side of the thigh. The muscle was kind of stiff, so I could not really sit cross-legged anymore in the proper way. Well, and for work, that was really bad. I could not stand for longer than 30 minutes. I had to sit down because the back pain would be so bad. And then I felt exhausted all the time and also had migraines and digestion issues. My health basically went to shit, you can say that. When I compare those symptoms I had with this list, there are quite a few that I had. Achy bones, widespread muscle pain, tender joints, stiffness, chronic fatigue, weakness, exhaustion, insomnia, sleep problems. Well, there was some kind of that going on. Brain fog, migraine headaches, yes. Difficulty speaking when I was tired. Depressive moods, anxiety, irritability. Absolutely, a lot of that. There are very few that I didn't have. So, yeah. There you have it. So that was my problem. Hip. And also back area and shoulders. And there were also some issues in both shoulders and elbows going on. Definitely the sleep problems, mood issues, concentration deficit, chronic muscle pain, as I said. This was an issue. That was an issue. Overactive bladder, yes. Frequent urination. Oh, what a pain in the ass. Morning stiffness, as I said. Gosh. Chronic fatigue. Yeah, okay. So, I tried the paleo version and that didn't work. Because paleo is still very high in oxalate foods. I guess this was the real issue here. And only after I went carnivore, only then slowly my chronic pain started to disappear. And what I forgot to mention, depression was gone after one month of carnivore. One month. And I didn't take any medication or something like that. Just carnivore. 
resolved all my issues with depression and chronic pain. The only thing I still had to deal with was the histamine intolerance, but my fibromyalgia-like symptoms were actually gone. So what Bart says in his video with fibromyalgia, it is basically connective tissue and muscle soreness and accompanied with constant exhaustion and depression. However, normally you would see in a person who experiences chronic pain that the area is hotter and inflamed, infrared camera would mark a significant difference. With fibromyalgia, however, you cannot register any such pain signals in the area. So that's why it is so often called mental imagination. And those who suffer from it will be invalidated which is very unfair because it's real and very painful so you have to convince the gp that you are experiencing the pain how do you do that well inflammation is happening inside the brain and causing all that pain if you do a brain scan of fibro patients, you see there is a change in the brain. Fibromyalgia, and they were able to actually show that people who have fibromyalgia have inflammation in their brain. This is something that it makes perfect sense. They finally were able to do it, put people in uh, imaging and show in their brain that uh, people who have fibromyalgia have inflammation going on there through, through doing a PET scan. And so something that it's obvious information to me, it makes sense, but uh, a lot of people don't realize, you know, fibromyalgia has just been this like diagnosis of exclusion for decades where, you know, you have some sort of pain phenomenon going on, we don't know what it is, so we'll just call it fibromyalgia. In fact, the name fibromyalgia comes fiber meaning, fiber meaning fiber, uh, myo meaning muscle and algae meaning pain, so fibrous muscle pain doesn't really tell us a lot about what's going on. Now we realize we're showing under laboratory conditions that there is systemic inflammation going on in the brain and the nervous system. And so the brain obviously controls the rest of the body via uh, the nervous system. And so this accounts for why people can have pain in unexplained places for unexplained reasons, have abnormally strong reactions to things that normally wouldn't hurt a normal person would hurt someone with fibromyalgia that they essentially their nervous system central nervous becomes sensitized meaning that they become more sensitized to pain and so now we see it under laboratory conditions so the question is we have this inflammation how do we get rid of it neuroinflammation is the specific inflammation short term for chronic of the nervous system, brain, and spinal cord, neuroinflammation is present in a variety of brain diseases, including neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, traumatic brain injury, and prolonged stress. We autistics definitely experience more stress just because our brain is wired in a different way than a neurotypical brain. That's why for me it makes sense that fibromyalgia can be related with autism as comorbidity, but again, not every autistic will experience fibromyalgia. Very often you see Ehlers-Danlos and autism combined in a person. So it depends from person to person. Is probably genetic.